Welcome back, everybody. Where do we find you today? Hopefully the present moment. That seems to be the new tagline, so we're just going to go with it. So today, next episode, we're going to talk about crafting a vision. So this one should be a little bit interesting. Uh, what do we mean by vision? Not necessarily a kid sitting in the optometrist's chair and needing eyeglasses, but rather seeing the future. Uh, you may have heard some quotes, you know, you can't build the future until you see it. And so the question is really, how do we find it and get that visionary mindset so we can go get it? A um, couple examples of visionary futures that people imagine. SpaceX is pretty famous in the tech world. Obviously, their vision is to get people on Mars. So big, audacious vision. Uh, Coca-Cola has a little bit different vision, not about building technology, but rather how they make people feel, which is happiness. And that's how all their advertises, advertisements are positioned. Um, so that's pretty cool. As always, uh, are your decisions moving you closer or further away? And a little bit more about us, and then here's a blank piece of paper for you to jot down notes. Okay, cool. So let's go to something else I want to share. So we've talked about some top-down stuff. Um, we've discussed different industries, different markets, healthcare, all of that sort of thing. Now, as I've been thinking about this, I've become sort of fascinated by planetary scale technologies. There's only a couple. The internet. That's a planetary scale technology. It's used by 5 billion people. There's not that many access gates. You need, obviously, money to pay an internet provider. You need uh, a machine, and then you need it not to be blocked by the country that you live in or the geographic location that you're accessing it from. Other things that have reached a tipping point above a billion people would be Facebook's products, Meta products, SMS, electricity, obviously food, water. Um, and as I've thought about the internet, Google, for instance, a search engine, I've thought about this idea of an internet-wide marketplace. What has the internet really done? What it's done is it's actually connected more than one person together. Um, across a variety of different needs, wants, desires, and it really has represented a place of transaction. Google is a marketplace. What's the definition of a marketplace? Marketplace is somewhere where a demand and a supply can come together and an exchange can happen, some exchange of value. I'll get to that a little bit more detailed, but I've been having these thoughts, so I put together uh, just these thoughts in a slide deck. It's going to be a little nonsensical and a little out of order. And I think as you think about what you do for yourself and the idea that you have, I think if you have this thing that's gnawing in the back of your mind, it's worth firing up a text editor, um, a document, a slide deck. You can use Google Slides, Google Docs, they're free, a piece of paper. Um, anything that you want to take some notes on. So Peter Thiel has talked famously about um, zero to one products. I've sort of specialized in that area, building something from nothing. And one of the things he talks about, well, there's two main premises. One is competitions for losers. The more competition that enters a market, um, the more profits tend to zero and it becomes commoditized. Maybe one winner takes all or most. The other side is to study end games. What he means by that is um, Google was the last search engine, not the first. They figured out a better algorithm that um, produced higher quality search results. Google figured out the end game. They weren't first, they were last. Same thing with Facebook. They weren't the first social network, but really they were the last one that won. So I was thinking if we're thinking about a marketplace on the internet, what does the end game look like? What happens? And what was the mechanics, the system mechanics of the group that won? The reality is that every marketplace has a take rate. They take a transaction fee. Um, some take more than others. Apple and Google take 30%. Airbnb, I've noticed, you know, by, you buy a single night stay for 180 bucks. The fees on top of that equal 150 bucks. It's almost the same amount of money in fees. Um, that it takes to get the internet, get the the room booked. Um, the federal governments 
take a take rate that's called taxes. So everyone's got to get their pound of flesh. And I thought, you know, wouldn't it be interesting if there was a marketplace that didn't charge you anything to use it? Perhaps many people would be attracted to that and the incentives would be aligned with the users. So let's explore that concept. So here's the idea. Nobody pays anybody. Um, it's an exchange of time and service. So it's back to a barter model. Um, bartering becomes very difficult when you have grains of sand and you need oil, let's say. Um, the reason is because it's hard to go find the person who has oil. On the internet, though, you have 5 billion people. If you have a sufficiently advanced enough technology, you could match the people who want something and the people who have something together. Um, and then, of course, you ask, how do you monetize this? Well, I wonder if what you earn or exchange are just tokens in the network down to this like Web3 thing. Obviously, these are very preliminary thoughts, but um, we'll keep going. I've got some other ideas as well. So here's the problem. I mentioned the Airbnb thing. Um, sick of paying 150 bucks in fees for a $180 night stay. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm almost paying 100% of the price to somebody else for something I'm getting no value for. Where's all that money going? It's ridiculous. Um, there's this idea of direct to consumer. So direct to consumer, kind of, but who are all the middle men and middle women that are taking their cut? Same thing with like home services. I need to get something fixed pipe breaks, toilet goes out of whack, um, washing machine is dead. You need somebody to get help really quickly. Um, but people are always gonna take their cut. Um, let's keep going. How it works, what you get. So I wondered about, and I've talked with my wife about this, but your skills and your values. So you may have a particular set of skills that you're good at that other people aren't, which means you have value that others don't that value could be translated. The other thing is um, you have a certain set of ideals, principles, belief systems that perhaps you would want to connect with people that have similar sort of values as you, um, you know, trustworthy, transparent, ethical, honest, things like this. Um, so maybe if you could find a better fit between skills and values, then um, you would have better long-term relationships that are created, more trustworthy relationships and stronger fits ultimately, which provides network lock-in and more value between all members of the ecosystem. Um, okay, so the first test. Here's the anatomic unit. This is more philosophical, but what do you want out of life? <laughs> this is a big question that not a lot of people can answer clearly. Um, what do you want? You have to ask yourself this and you need to be honest with yourself about it. If you don't know what you want, you don't know where you're headed and you might end up somewhere that you don't want to be. So it's an important question, not easy. Um, we're going to skip past it, but you should spend a lot of time on this one. Free time. This is a big deal. Every single human on the planet has the same amount of time in a day. Uh, it really just depends on what you do with it. So... Um, there's a lot of people who have done a lot, a lot of people have not done a lot. And, um, in some situations there might be issues where you s just can't do something because of either the situation, environment, um, perhaps some situation just with yourself where you're physically or mentally not able to cross a barrier. It, put those things aside is, um, can you carve out a couple moments a day, every day? For the next 10 20 years of your life if you can then you can do something productive with that time then this one uh the wall so you've probably hit the wall if you're in this course with me um you've hit the wall multiple times like i can't break through this is too difficult i don't have the skill set i mean this is where you need some help you can reach out to me uh, in the last lesson, I've provided my contact information as well as in the Magic Castle. Uh, reach out, let me know what's going on. Uh, I'll be happy to help if I can. Your support system around you can help. But I think ultimately it comes down to a couple things. One is you could just be super pissed off about where your life is or somebody else that they're doing something and you aren't, and it just pushes you through that wall. The other one could be um, like you're not happy with where things are and you want to change that. And then the other one, which is a more pure form of energy, 
is um, you have this internal drive or you have this internal feeling that doesn't quite go away. It's this voice, it's this like pull that is pulling you in a certain direction. Um, if that's the case, you should listen to it and it doesn't have to be an aggressive sort of thing, but it could just be something that in a quiet time or a quiet space, um, you really need to listen to and just kind of try to directionally align yourself on that path. Um, I think if it's a positive space, good things will happen. Uh, obviously, you know, sometimes it could take us down dark roads. So I think the real lesson is the golden rule. Um, you have pure and utter freedom as long as you're not violating the freedoms or of others. So if you go in a forest and you're by yourself and you do things that make you happy, hey, I'm happy for you. Um, just got to get through the wall. Find a way. Everybody hits the wall. <laughs> There's a lot of them. You'll keep hitting them. Just get through them. Um, we talked about this last time a little bit, but I just put it in here because it helps as a reminder to me to just keep remembering you know, magical products, healthy. I haven't really heard people talk about this a lot, but I think as we move into this, um, the 2020s and the 2030s, it's not just so much that they make money, but like they're good for us. Like um, it's what you eat, but also the things that you use and the things you read and the things you interact with are also healthy for you, spiritually, mentally, physically, work life, relationships, personal life, all of that. So I think these are some core tenants that, you know, we'd want to keep in mind as we build our product out, set this vision. I thought this was interesting. This is some, some other inspirational stuff um, on both sides of the coin. One is really just, you know, an ETF on disruptive innovation. Might be interesting to see like how they make decisions on uh, what investments come into or out of that uh, exchange traded fund. The other one I came across on YouTube, very interesting. I'd, I'd say give it a give it a watch. It's like ten minutes, but um, it's uh, I think an Asian gentleman who was maybe five eight in height, and the preceding or prevailing wisdom was that you needed to be tall with long legs and long stride to be able to compete at a world class level, at the Olympic level, in order to um, be you know, a contender for the 100 yard or 100 meter dash and win gold. Well, come to find out that this gentleman, I won't ruin the story for you, but um, he flied in the face of that women, of that wisdom and um, achieved something pretty spectacular. So I think it's worth looking at that. And he was already very good and he completely ripped everything apart, threw it all away, started from scratch rebuilt himself up in the way to achieve this goal, broke through various walls, achieved it. And um, now he is a visionary leader and a shining example, a lighthouse for other people like him to achieve anything. So pretty cool. Give it a look. Um, master plans are interesting. This one is interesting. Um, the world we live in, people talk about products at this point, you know, a beautiful product. It's easy to use. It looks nice. It feels good. Everyone sort of said, that's okay. That's fine. Uh, the beauty industry often has a stigma, right? Like maybe it's bad to want to be beautiful or um, invest in things like that. I think even the words that we say, the uh, presence that we put out, I think there's something there. You don't want to be disingenuous on any of this, but there's something about like gravity. Gravity is attractive. Um, what are humans drawn to? I think just by definition, understanding human behavior, uh, it's an interesting thought experiment and exercise as you, you know, sit and watch, scroll through the internet, social feeds, sit in the airport, watch how people are attracted to different stores or different people, different ideas, different words, different images understand why and um, maybe use some of those things to your advantage. Uh, that earns you attention. And then there's some other things in here, which I think message on outcomes, on the return that people will get from interacting with you or your product. If your product doesn't give them some sort of value, then why would they even use it or spend their time? And this one I, you know, I've become, I like, I've become a fan of. 
I think if you can spread your wings, that's great. And you teach other people how to spread their wings, that's even better because then we get into like this flywheel and the more people that are doing this, the better the world becomes for everybody, you know, from every metric. Um, and then this was uh, an old, old um, company that I had, but one of our taglines was build apps that save time or make time fly. So this would be like an inter enterprise app, saves you time, it's efficiency, that sort of thing. This is more of a consumer app, um, entertainment, makes time fly. So that's kind of cool. Um, this comes from the Bezos gentleman himself. So he said, focus on things that don't change, right? So for Amazon, it was cheaper prices, faster shipping. At no point in time is any human going to go, you know what, Jeff, I want you to charge me more money and I want you to deliver my stuff slower. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's an interesting thing to place investments on and bets on, on things that you know won't change. So here's a couple things that I just wrote down. Um, I just don't see people wanting less of this <laughs> um, or time. It's a, it is the most valuable commodity in the world. You spend it, you can never get it back. Money can't even buy it. Um, people want to have fun. And then I think this is really interesting. So Pareto efficiency is this line that says for you to be better off, um, I can't be worse off or for me to be better off, you can't be worse off. So when we have like, let's say a hundred people in a network, in order for it to be Pareto efficient, everything that everyone does benefits everyone else. Doing that at scale means that the thing just skyrockets. I mean, could you imagine like the amount of compounding that would occur rapidly if you were able to develop the mechanics around a Pareto efficient system or product or app. Oh my God, a 5 billion people on the internet, everything they do at every moment benefits all 4 billion, 999 million, yada, yada. It's a crazy thought. Um, okay. Resilience, optionality. So hard times will come. Are you resilient? do you have the ability to adjust and adapt? So um, this is interesting. I'm not going to go too much deeper into this. It starts to get a little bit more mechanical, but reach out to me if you want to chat about it. Uh, some principles that I've learned over the years. The internet compounds its ability to fly, find and exploit inefficient transactions. So here's an example. You want to buy a pair of shoes. Uh, you go online and you search for a coupon code or you search Nikes and you're trying to find the retailer that has the cheapest pair of the one that you want. Um, that's you <laughs> using the internet to exploit inefficiencies. You are an arbitrage machine, pretty cool. So for us, I think what that means is like 100% match accuracy, 0% take rate, optimal price points. And the more you can do that, the more liquidity you have, the more transactions you have, the more um, energy flows through the system, the more people that are attracted to the system, the more valuable the system becomes for everybody. Um, and then I got into what are transactions in the universe. And ultimately it comes down to an exchange of four things, time, attention, money, and energy. And what these are, they're actually all the same thing. They're all the same thing. Different words, different doors into the same house, the same coin, different sides, the same elephant, just a hoof, um, you know, a tail, uh, all of those sorts of things. Growth loops are interesting. Just playing around with some ideas here. Uh, TikTok recently was reported that now has more engagement and views than Google itself. So number one on the internet, that's pretty crazy. So you can go viral on your first post without an account, that's nuts. Um, so seems like maybe we should use that as an acquisition channel. Um, you can register your profile. So this would be like a user flow upgrade, yada, yada. You could like use this course, um, earn the ability to earn money, tokens, achievements, status, trust, whatever that is. 
you could spend it, you could trade, and then you could post that back to TikTok, which then gets more people interested and it's just a recurring cycle, it's a loop. Um, products, talk about a little bit. Um, so I thought about, okay, if we really were gonna open this up, that means that everyone could build a product on top of a product, which is creating even more tremendous value, not just listing a skill or a need or a want. Um, and I thought about, you know, at scale, billions of people, what if it was just this massive task app, which says, I have either this small thing or this large thing that I need to get done. I, pu I publish it to the planet. Someone says, I'll do that for you and I'll pay you this amount or do this amount or trade you for this amount and uh, gets done rapidly and you could just literally post your to-do list and boom, it's done like in a day for, you know, pennies on the dollar. And the speed at which things would get done, the efficient pricing that would happen across the world and the ability to bring the rest of the world up from poverty into a standard sort of um, status of life could be really, really compelling. Uh, and that could be in location, out of location, could be very interesting. I, I, I'm really fascinated about that concept. I think it has a lot of merit. Um, so here's an idea of that, right? Like three high level concepts. So things that I need to do. Here's things that I want to help my friends and family do or get done. Here's things that I need to accomplish at work and school. And then it's just a task under each one. Each one has a dollar value and a time uh, commitment and somebody else sees it, comes in, checks it off, transaction occurs, boom. Deducts your crypto account maybe or something like that. Pretty cool. Okay, uh, core marketplace principles. So really it's about matching demand with supplies, two sides of the market, right? And you have to meet them together at a clearing price point. And I thought about different ways to do this. There's um, search, you know, you can search, you can use manual tagging system. Um, you can do automation like machine learning. And then I thought about what is the transaction or exchange of value? There's really three. It's currency, that's the reason currency was developed to exchange goods and services between people. That's back to our GDP conversation. Um, so it's basically, I'm gonna trade you dollars for euros or pounds or CNY or whatever it may be, or like Bitcoin. Um, I could also say, I'm gonna, I'm gonna spend a dollar on a loaf of bread, let's say. And then here's the barter one that nobody's really doing on the internet. And as I, as I looked at, okay, what are transactions and exchanges of values? I realized that this happens a lot. This happens a lot. This one doesn't really happen. And I thought that was very strange. So I thought that was an opportunity. Um, value assignment. How do you know what something's worth? Other than, I mean, it's really whatever people are willing to spend. That is actually the definition. Like this pencil to me, because I have a million of them, may be worth a penny and I can get them and I don't need it. I don't need a pencil today. To an artist who's just starting out, who's penniless and homeless, that pencil may be worth their life, right? So they're willing to work cleaning your house for an entire day to get that one pencil because that one pencil unlocks the rest of their life for them. And that is the one blocker that they need. So they're willing to do a lot in order to get that small thing. So, um, you know, you bring those two things together and it basically means that, you know, maybe I'll get a little bit more than a penny for my pencil and the other person doesn't have to spend an entire day working their butt off just to get a pencil. And so they kind of meet together in the middle and maybe it's five cents and the guy just says, well, maybe I can write a couple emails for you. Great. Um, or gal, whatever. And then incentives. Incentives rule the world. Incentives rule humanity. We are nothing if not um, status sinking monkeys. There's a blog post about that from a fellow product person. And um, I spent about five years of my life designing incentives for the boards, executive teams, all employees of like Fortune 500 companies. And humans are computer programs you say, I will pay you X to do Y, they will do exactly Y and expect X in return. Computer programs. But be careful, because they're gonna do exactly that, and you may not want them to do exactly that because there's unintended consequences. So you just have to be very careful with incentives. 
Okay, what users want? Um, they want to get paid 90th percentile for their work. Their time is very valuable. They can't get it back. They want to work from anywhere. They don't want to be penalized. They want a good work-life balance. They want a chance. They want the ability to like do something they want to do. You can't get the experience without the experience. Um, that's opportunity for us. And then buyers, you know, this is the other side of that. They want something very high quality uh, for their money and they want it to work. They want it to be done right the first time. They want to deal with professionals. And so really it comes down to how do we bridge this gap between these two? And then they also don't want to spend a lot. So there's a golden thread that floats through here somewhere. And if we can build the bits around that energy space, then good things will happen. Um, I thought this was interesting. Where we sit today at the beginning of 2022, crypto has kind of taken a, another big spike up in attention due to NFTs. And uh, there's a network called Braintrust who did a survey of their community. And Braintrust is just a talent network. Um, and they asked everybody, do you want to get paid in cryptocurrency? The vote was 30,000 to zero. 30,000 said yes. Zero said no. <laughs> That's insane. Could you imagine a presidential election being 100% for one person and zero for the other? Like, I've never seen a result like this in my life. So it's for real. It's here. Um, might be a part of the internet marketplace, so that's cool. And then I think, you know, an initial idea floating about what Web3 is, rebuilding the internet around healthier products, more sustainable, more selfless, becoming a part of it. Um, sounds a lot like a food brand, doesn't it? Uh, I think it's really where human consciousness as a species is going. So I think that impacts everything from money to work, to relationships, to products they interact with, um, to time, how they spend their time. So yeah, that's that. All right, so let's switch to a prototype. So I built something called Publish to the Planet. So we're gonna get started here. So I created a prototype on Bubble. I'm calling it the Planetary Marketplace. It's very simple. There's an input over here where you can put your information in, your avatar, your name, your contact information, the skills you have, what you can offer to others, um, and then what you need. And so the idea is this, you both have a supply and demand for you. And if we publish both of those to the planetary marketplace at the same time, um, then other people can discover them and maybe, you know, there's a good fit with one, a good fit for another, and we can start to exchange and transact with each other. And uh, so here's an example of an output right here. Um, obviously this is really messy and dirty, but let's go ahead and try it out. So here's my profile pic. It's uploading. There we go. I'm gonna enter my name, my last name. I'm going to do a unique email. Um, I haven't added any other things in here. So what do I offer? Let's say I have um, skills in product management, operations, teaching others, um, and being supportive. Uh, what do I need? Um, I need good people. Uh, who want to build good things together and um, improve the lives. Uh oh, oops. All right, let's publish. Boom, there it is. Cool. So look, we've published the planetary marketplace. Here it is right there underneath. And then, you know, you could imagine that this feed gets really, really large. So we need to do a search here um, for needs. So this is the needs section over here. So I could do like, I wonder if cash, people need cash. Oh, that's interesting. So that pulled that up. I wonder if people wanna build, oh, there we go, cool. So we're actually displaying 
uh, answers dynamically as we type from the planetary marketplace. So that's it. We've gone through some ideas. We've gone through some principles, a vision deck, and we've built a prototype. Um, as we move forward, we might build this out even further, get some more people on the network. And, uh, you know, maybe if you want to be a part of it, give me a shout. Cool. Talk to you later. Peace.